Hey you guys, it's Peter and welcome to my channel Peterisms where I tell stories of my life and just little things that I've learned as I've grown into the person that I am today. And today is a meditation day, but it's actually a lesson that I'm learning slowly in my life. So when I read this meditation today, I just was like, okay, this speaks so directly to me. I want to talk about it. So grab your coffee, grab your tea, grab your water, grab whatever you do when you watch videos and let's sit down and uh, I'm going to tell you guys about this. One of the things I want to share in here though, and I've been talking about it on my vlog that I've done for the last two days that has really, really helped me. And you know, in recovery, there's this whole kind of conversation about, you know, like prayer and meditation and what meditation means and how you do it. And it was so interesting because today I was sitting outside and I read four meditation books and was doing my affirmations and praying. And I just felt so centered today, like outside. And the, the last thing that I have been doing is I have been like sitting in, in this chair out on my patio and um, just closing my eyes and just listening to all of the sounds around me. And yesterday I heard like, you know, cars in the distance and this and that and, you know, a plane going over. And today I heard like a lawnmower and different birds from all around me. And, you know, what it makes me realize is that I'm pretty small in the grand scheme of things, you know. I just really am, you know. And um, my problems and all of that are just really pretty small in the grand scheme of things. And so it kind of puts my life in some kind of check or order. And it's really helped. And this meditation that I've been doing in the morning, and that's what I call all of it together, has really kind of started to evolve for me. And I don't, you know, trying different things and whatever has kind of become this practice, this ritual in the mornings that has really, really helped me throughout the day. And one of the other things that I've started to do just in the last two or three days is before I go, you know, and you guys know I've been talking about this on here, that like I don't pick up the phone, I don't go to social media, I don't do any of this kind of, it was funny because today like this whole process of doing this and doing a face mask and all this kind of stuff like took a long time, like it was like a, a, like 20 minutes to do the meditation, the mask, then you know, all this kind of stuff, standing outside with the dogs and it was like, like I think like 30 or 45 minutes before I was done with all of that. And um, Alex, my husband, had texted me <laughs> like right before I had started doing it, but I didn't know because I hadn't checked my phone. And then it had been like 45 minutes, and so he was like, are you okay? <laughs> like, I'm like, yeah, I was just doing my meditations. So, uh, but the thing I've been doing before I go on and I pick up my phone or whatever is that like as I'm walking into the house, I ask myself like, okay, are you ready? Like, do you feel prepared for the day ahead? And that question a lot like I really asked myself you know like that question alone has really helped me so it's this whole kind of meditation process that I've been doing find what works for you you know try some different things and um, you know it's been really really helpful to me one of the things I want to also do is I used to listen to like new agey kind of CDs and have them going in the house. I want to get a couple of those and just kind of have them playing in the morning before I like turn on the TV, turn on anything else. And I want to just kind of have that in the background as some kind of like, you know, the peaceful kind of music. My mom used to love Gregorian chants back in the day. And I think to find some kind of music that's just for me and instrumental and then listening to it as I'm like starting my morning and drinking water and doing a face mask and taking a shower and getting ready, I think just might clear my head. So find what works for you and just, you know, start practicing it and picking out the things that do and don't work. So I read four meditation books today because I went in and I grabbed two and it was funny. Um, I have two sitting out here and then I went in and I was going to grab one, which was this one. Um, but then I grabbed another one and that meditation like really helped me today. And I read it on my vlog, um, already for today. So I'm not going to read it on here, but I want to talk about this meditation because when I read it, I was like, it was kind of like, it was interesting. My, my, uh, my, uh, what do you call it? My meditations today were kind of all over the place. Sometimes they kind of align, but they were all over the place in what they were talking about. One of them was talking about money. The other one was talking about like, you know, not beating yourself up about the same thing over and over and over again. That was the one I talked about on my vlog. Um, and this one is, and I don't remember what the codependent no more one is. That's interesting. Um, but this one is about from the, Daily Book of Positive Quotations by Linda Pacom. This one is about uh, like being of service. And when I read it, I was like, oh my God, this is something I have so worked hard on in the last couple years. And I'm going to tell some stories after this because my mom and my aunt, and especially my best friend Tanya, are people that I know that are such wonderful examples of doing what this meditation talks about. And so I want to kind of share some stories of that. But um, let me read the meditation to you. September 27th helping. 
The quote is by E.W. Howe. When a friend is in trouble, don't annoy him by asking if there is anything you could do. Think up something appropriate and do it. Let me know if there's some, if, let me know if there's anything I can do to help Maybe one of the most useless things we can ask. People overwhelm, wait, let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Maybe one of the most useless thing we can say. People overwhelmed by illness, grief, or hardship can't or won't always ask for the help they need. Even if they can identify and express what they need, they may feel reluctant to ask. Are there dishes to be washed? Children to be watched? Lawns to be mowed? The simplest tasks of ordinary life may be going undone during a crisis. Pick up a dish towel or grab a lawnmower and just do what needs to be done. I will help others in need by taking on some of the mundane but essential activities they are too distracted to handle. And I just love this so much, you know? And um, when I was growing up, and I'm gonna apply this really to like people that are terminally ill or people that are just sick in general or when somebody passes away because in my life that has been when it's like affected them the most or going through a divorce, you know, or a really tough breakup or something like that too, I think. Um, you know, my mom and my aunt were the, the kind of women that if somebody passed away or if somebody was sick, they didn't call and ask what they needed. They immediately put together a basket of bread and a casserole and, and a whole meal for one night for the family, right? Or the person and took flowers and wrote a personal note and they took it over there and they didn't just leave it. They like walked inside and then if dishes weren't done, they started doing dishes and you know, like they would clean and make beds and change linens and do all that kind of stuff. And just without even being asked, they just did this, you know? And I can remember like my mom back in the day, I would say to her like, because I always felt felt like it's so intrusive like when somebody's going through something you know I feel often that it's like intrusive to go and you know just I don't know like maybe their home is their personal space and they don't want me there and whatever and what I've learned is that people that really don't want you there will say I appreciate your help but I really just want to be alone right now you know and I do think that we have to respect people when they say that but by and large what I witnessed by growing up in that kind of environment is that people really appreciate it and they'll say oh my god thank you so they they don't ask for it but they'll say thank you so much having gone through those moments myself like when my mom was sick and then when she passed away, you know, like I don't, I didn't know what to ask for. You know, I didn't know really what I needed. And, you know, at that time that my mom was really sick, my friend Tanya was like having me over for Sunday dinners, you know, and she would check on me like every day. And I had a support system of people that were checking on me every day. Just, you know, are you okay? And things like that. And, you know, Tanya would just like, and a friend would just show up at my house and be like, come on, let's go get a fountain Coke. They didn't call and ask. They didn't text me. They just said, come on, let's go get a fountain Coke. And so, you know, they did for me what I could not do for myself. My best friend, Tanya, is such a great example of this. And she does this in her life all the time, not just for, pe for everybody in her life. Um, she's constantly doing things for other people. And um, she had a couple that she and her husband have been friends with, I think, 30 plus years. And um, so the husband had a brain tumor and he was very, very ill. And it was towards the end and he was in hospice at home. And, um, one day Tanya and I were like driving around and I had been, this is like, I don't know, like three or four years ago. And I had been really, really going through some stuff, you know? And like, and I was like in the car and I was like telling her about it. I was like complaining and whatever. And you know, it was, it was some pretty crappy stuff, but it was nothing in comparison to what these people were going through. Obviously nothing, nothing in comparison to that. And so, you know, she didn't really say a whole lot. And so finally, like, you know, the conversation turned and I said, well, what did you do today? And she said, oh, I went over to so-and-so's house and, you know, like, um, I made them dinner. I cleaned their dishes. You know, I vacuumed. I made their bed. I brought a movie over for them to watch. And I was like, oh, wow. Like, that's awesome that you did that, you know? And, and I said, how do you get to the point where you just do that stuff? And she's like, that's, I was taught to be that person, you know? And like, that's who I try to be. And, you know, over time, I have learned to kind of become that person as well and just show up when people need me. And just, you know, it's just, I don't ask anymore. I just go and I just do those things. Because what I've learned is, like I said, the people that really want some space will say, I just need some space right now, okay? But tomorrow, check in on me or whatever. But by and large, people are just so happy that you're there and you're doing something. We had a conversation, like, when this was going on, um, it was talking about the mundane or just, like, the daily activities in here, you know? We were, Tony and I were outside of a meeting one night, and um, 
this woman that we know that lives in the neighborhood of this couple. And, you know, at that point, Tanya had been taking games over there and movies. And, like, every day, every day, she would go over there. You know, like, she wasn't going to take no for an answer. <laughs> and, um, so, you know, this woman was standing outside and we were talking to her. And she's a friend of ours and she lives in these people's neighborhood. And she said to Tanya, she goes, is there anything that they need? And Tanya said, you know, like, uh, their, their yard needs to be done. Their, their lawn hasn't been mowed in over two weeks or something like that. But, you know, and she's like, okay, well, I can get to that. And she's like, well, whenever you do, it doesn't need to be today. It doesn't need to be tomorrow, you know, in a week or whenever, just, just so it looks nice, you know? And, um, Tanya went there the next day and she was like, um, taking some stuff over there and the lawn was mowed. Like the woman had gone home, got up the next day and mowed the lawn like that. No questions asked. And that is who I aim to be as a person, you know? To not always just say, what is it that you need for me in this situation? But to be what I think they need in that situation. And that is truly a being of service and helping other people. And that's a place that I've wanted to get to for a long time. Also to get out of myself. You know, it, it gets you out of yourself and your own problems of your day and whatever when you're of service to other people. And so when I read this today, I was like, oh my God, this speaks right directly to me because this has been something I've struggled with my whole life, you know? Let me know if there's anything I can do to help. Maybe one of the most useless things we can say. People overwhelmed by illness, grief, or hardship can't or won't always ask for the help they need. Even if they can identify and express what they need, they may feel reluctant to ask. And I think that's where it all, you know, is right there is they don't know what to ask for and they're reluctant to ask because I think in life, by and large, we don't want to be burdens to other people. And so sometimes we just have to step up and be what that person wants from us. So I hope that helped you. It really helped me today. And, um, you know, the backside to that is I always feel good about myself when I'm helping other people. Don't you? Like, don't you feel good if you can be of service to somebody else and do nice things and be compassionate. I know I do. I feel like I'm in the positive when I'm doing that, you know, and that, you know, my actions are kind and compassionate. And, you know, when I act out of that to help somebody else, it gets me out of myself. And, and, and I think that that's important. So I love you guys. I hope that meditation resonated with some of you out there and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.